Welcome back everybody, Wyatt Paints here, and today I've got something extra special. A viewer has sent in an STL of a Space Marine. Now I haven't done anything in 40k yet, but I'm ready to dive into that grim dark future and make something amazing. Let's get started. I wanted to try the time lapse feature on my camera and show a little bit more of the painting process without having all of you sit through the hours of watching literal paint dry. Please enjoy what was two hours of my life as I stippled on blue in four different flavors, starting with Imperial Blue. Now, while this looks like black, trust me, there is some blue in there and it's gonna be the first step in developing our color. I followed this up with the namesake of this model, Ultramarine Blue. This time I focused the color on areas to start honing in my highlights. This meant the top of his jump pack, the center of his pauldrons, kneecaps, and the top of his toes got a little extra attention. Next shade up was electric blue. I used this to continue building the highlights and reinforce the shapes that they were on. Keep in mind where I had previously painted in the last step. I did put a few splotches out of place here and there to add a bit more texture to the piece as it would give it a natural scratchy finish to his armor. Finally, I went over the high points with electric blue to give it some pop. This last color really gave it a glow that just wowed me. I already started to love how this was turning out. I just had to make sure the rest of the details were gonna be up to par. For his base, I wanted a contrasting tone without standing out too much, so I based it in maroon brown. I followed this up with two passes of dry brushing first with cold gray and then stonewall gray real quick i'd like to take this moment to thank our patreon the macho your support has helped keep the lights on encourage me to keep on pumping out great content like this thank you so much and if you'd like to join the macho you'll find links to my patreon in the description below now to slow it all down and get started on his weapons I gave his bolt pistol and chainsword a quick dry brush and gunmetal. With a dry brush, you can get a super even and fast coat without much worry. I followed this up with shiny silver, but that silver was a bit too clean for the 40k, so I hit it with nullin oil to gunk it up a bit. One more pass with a silver dry brush for the nibbly edges, and he was looking dangerous. It was about this time I actually found a good reference picture of Ultramarines and I realized my sword was not as it should be. But no worries, dry brushing puts very thin coats of paint so painting over it won't be a problem. I needed to make a quick mask for the gun, so I used good old painter's tape. Then I gave the gun and chainsword the same four step dry brushing process that the main body got. Imperial Blue, followed by Ultramarine Blue, then Magic Blue, and finished with Electric Blue. I promise, that's the last time I'm going to say blue. Next, I wanted to get going on the gold details, so I started with P3 Blighted Gold. The details on this chainsaw were particularly tricky because they were so thin, but if you treat it like an edge highlight and use the side of your brush, it wasn't too impossible, just nerve wracking. Next, his armor trim got the blighted gold treatment. And man, there was a lot of trim. I can't imagine the discipline it takes to do this in 32 millimeter scale. And for a whole army, hats off to anybody that runs a space marine army out there. I needed a break from the trim work, so I took this time to do the gold details on his gun. Couldn't find reference pictures for this particular gun, so I kind of had to guess where things went. So I went sparingly and just hit the rain sights and what looked like a laser sight in the front. Both of the keelas and a couple of side buttons, and I called it done. Now back to the trim. Now, I want to complain that there was a lot of trim, but really it wasn't too much trim. While he might be the pinnacle of human warfare, a, a literal walking death machine, he was also fancy. And if I have to paint all this trim, my boy was gonna gleam like the sun. After that, I took care of the details on his knee pad, arm guards, and backpack. Oh, and this shiny little bird, I'm gonna call him Maurice. While the gold dried, I moved on to his shoulder markings and insignia that needed to be white. And it's not the greatest idea to use pure white on a model, so I opted to use Frostbite, which is nearly white, but with just a touch of blue. Two coats on his shoulder insignia, and he was good. 
I then based the scripture parchments in Menoth white. As you may have seen in my previous videos, I like to use this whenever I have to paint a muslin type cloth. Two thin coats and I was happy with them. Next I want to add some more visual interest to his gun, so I got in close and used a stripe of sanguine on the ammo and the mag. Little things like this add so much to your final piece. And since I had this red out, I might as well give his helmet mohawk a stripe and get in for his visor. And I almost forgot about the gems on his chain sword. And all of these parts got a simple highlight of rose red to finish off the look. And while it was here, I noticed my oopsie near the hilt on his chain sword. So I busted out the silver again, and in a few swipes, poof, the stake was gone. In fact, if you ask me, I'd say I planned to do this the whole time. And while I'm here, might as well get the teeth on his chain swords and those vents on his jetpack. I'll just have to remember to shade these later on. Again, since it was out, I went ahead and started putting silver on each rivet that I found on his armor, just to break up all that blue. Okay, that's the last time I'll say blue. Next I took German Brown to base his pouches and combat knife, because this marine had no shortage of extra bits on his belt, after I went in with Bootstrap Brown as a second tone. I hadn't really made any hard decisions on these yet, but I figured this was a good start and I'd figure the rest out later. Next, it was time to shade all the gold, and for that I used Seraphim Sepia. It's a nice warm tone for golds, and because I used Blighted Gold, which has a bit of green in it, they combined to give it a very rich depth that paid off later. Next up was to use Nullin Oil to shade every crack and scar in his armor. I had to be super careful here to not let it get out of control and end up on my blue, so brush control was paramount. In some areas, I had to let the tip of the brush just dance and dab ever so slightly. Of course, this was a good time to get shade in those vents in his backpack. Also, there was a few panel lines that needed reinforcing, so they got the love they needed as well. Next, I highlighted the gold a bit with P3 Glorious Gold. For my money, nothing quite pops like this gold. I focus this on the upturned areas and towards the center of each piece. When you lay this on top of a shaded gold, it can capture the look of a sheen of light and it ended up being perfect for this. Can't forget those skulls. Every one of those skulls got a nice shiny forehead. Oh yeah, and Maurice, he wanted to be shiny too. I moved back to silver, as I had found some rivets I had missed on the first pass. I also took this opportunity to get those bullet holes on his chest, and also put a little bit in each one of the large tears on his armor, to give it a bit more authenticity. Then I add a little bit to his belt to break up all that gold. Speaking of gold, I had to get it back out so I could do the outline of his omega on his knee. Closing in on the finish line, I gave the wax on this purity seal a coat of sanguine and then a highlight of rose red to finish it off. The final details to nail was the gear on his belt. For the pouches, I decided they would get some stitching with men off white. Next, his grenades got a base in cold gray, then I put some nullin oil in all the recesses. I followed this up by cleaning up all the overspill with cold gray, and then topped the primer and pin with gunmetal. Finally, for his knife, I gave it a heavy dry brush and bootstrap, and then a light one in men off white. The Aquila and handguard got a coat of blight and gold, and then shaded with sepia. I didn't bother too much with the side that faces the marine, and really, these only got what I like to call a suggestion of color, as the outside face is the one that's going to get all the attention. Lastly, a few pops of glorious gold finish off the blade and this model. Man, this one was an adventure. For my first 40k model, it was a bit ambitious, but I think it came out well. The blues glow, and the true metal metallics just sing. Unfortunately, I can't tell you where you can get this model, but if my viewer gets back to me, I'll be sure to update the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We're crossing 100 subs, and I am so hyped and overwhelmed by the support I've gotten. I really appreciate it. It's been humbling. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.